getting started with Google Chat. In previous videos, I did admit that I was slow to adopt chat. When it was Hangouts, it felt a little too informal. When it morphed into chat, it still felt very disorganized. But when rooms became spaces, the application really started to make sense for me. Last year, Finton investigated the functionality of chat and compared it with one of the market's biggest IM applications out there, Slack. Asking which is better for business, he concluded that what it really boils down to is whether or not having a possible extra handful of applications is really worth the cost invested in a standalone app, as opposed to using the already built-in functionality there in the Google Workspace. If you are someone who wants to take your first steps into using instant messaging to up your productivity or reduce your spend by unlocking the functionality that already exists in your Google Workspace, then let's get you started on that journey. Today, we are going to focus on the first steps, how to access chat at Spaces, creating your Spaces, starting to interact with your space and its members. How you access your chat and spaces is an important part of getting started. Chat can be accessed through a browser or a desktop or mobile application. The first browser option is to use chat through the Gmail interface integration. Access from the main menu without leaving your Gmail application. This access is possible in a browser window on your computer or in the Gmail app on your phone to keep communication flowing on the move. With the main menu open or collapsed, clicking or hovering over the icons for chat or spaces gives a smooth journey from Gmail to instant message without opening new tabs. Click on a person or a space to open a full screen view of your conversation and access all the chat functionality. We'll look at this shortly. Accessing quick settings allows customization of which applications are available in your Gmail interface. Untick Google Chat to remove the chat or spaces icons or untick Google Meet to remove quick access to your scheduled meets or quick meet functionality. For some, the integrated view is distracting. Turn off the apps in Gmail and access the chat in its own browser. This can be achieved by going to mail.google.com forward slash chat. This gives a full view of chat in its own tab. The menu can be uncollapsed now as there's lots of dedicated space here and the menu splits between chat, spaces and meet. Each section can be hidden or revealed with the chevron or hide the menu and use the space icons or hover menus. Save yourself time opening a chat tab when you're starting Chrome by adding this to your own startup tabs. Access the menu to the right of your Chrome avatar and scroll to settings. From the left hand menu, select on startup. From the startup menu, select the third option, open a specific page or set of pages and add new page. In the pop-up, add the chat URL and click add. Chat will now be auto-opened along with any other tabs you've requested when you start up Chrome. If you don't want to add yet another tab to your already busy browser, you might consider downloading the native app for your desktop. From chat.google.com forward slash download, you can install this application, but make sure your device is running Google Chrome 73 or upwards, that the Chrome browser is open. And if you're having trouble completing the installation on your work or school account, contact your Google Workspace administrator. The interface is identical to the web browser chat application. However, it is accessible from the taskbar once open and can be pinned to the taskbar for quick access. Now, the important thing here is to remember to launch the application as you begin your day. To ensure a smooth start, you can automate the application opening. To do so, open a tab in Chrome in the Omnibar and type Chrome 
colon forward slash forward slash app. Right click on Google Chat and select Start App when you sign in. Lastly, for on the go access in a standalone application, download the Google Chat app from App Store or Google Play. The application opens in the chat menu with pinned chats at the top, followed by all other chats in order of most recent activity. Click the spaces icon to see a similar layout of all the spaces you are a member of. Easily flip from chat to files to tasks. From the hamburger menu, access notifications, chat settings and general settings. Now that we have considered where we will access our space, let's get on with setting one up, understanding who can do what in a space, understanding how to make a space private or discoverable and adding members to your space, including external members, before personalising your settings. I'm going to set up my space here in the Gmail integration, as this is where I like to work on spaces. The steps are the same across all the different access points. Click the plus button to start a new space. Select create a space and a pop-up window will appear with all the custom elements that you will need to either add or choose to set up your space. Firstly, give your space a name. There are generally a few types of spaces that teams will create. A team space to discuss team relevant issues, a water cooler space to allow for more company-wide communication or replicate those water cooler moments, a project space, a project specific space with interdisciplinary members, or an announcement space, an organizational communication space where posting is limited to space managers. This functionality is due to come online from May. If you are creating many spaces, you might consider using a numeric or alphabetic indication to manage similar sounding spaces or use a year or quarter naming convention. Next, add a description for members of your space to understand what the space is about. This is most important if you are creating discoverable spaces. Now you can begin to add members. Let's take a moment to understand what roles there are in spaces and what functions are available to these roles. There are currently two roles in spaces, space manager and space member. As you might expect, the space manager has the most functionality. Space managers can add new members, send a message to all members in a space using the at all function. They can delete messages and manage the chat history settings. And a space manager can give additional manager permissions to other members. They can also update the space's access setting and remove members. They can manage their personal notifications and edit the description and any guidelines for a space. They can pin a space in their own left-hand navigation for ease of access. And lastly, the space manager can leave a space while the space remains available for other members, block or report a space, and ultimately delete a space for all members. Space members can Add participants and remove them. Reach out to all members using the at all function and edit space descriptions and guidelines. Currently members can also turn on and off chat history. With upcoming updates to Google Chat, space managers will be able to limit this functionality. Each member can set personal notifications and pin spaces and members can block or report spaces and ultimately leave a space. After adding members, consider the accessibility of your space. Spaces default to restricted, meaning that only people or groups who have been added to the space can join. This is best for project spaces or spaces that require a level of privacy. Alternatively, it's possible to make your space discoverable allowing anyone in the organization to find and join the space by using a link. This access setting is ideal for general chat or communication spaces. 
At this stage, as the space creator, you can take the decision to make a space internal only or to allow for external stakeholders to be invited. Please note, this will affect your access setting. If allowing external stakeholders to join a space, the space must be restricted. If you allow external members, you can now add those members. They can choose whether or not to accept the invitation. And remember, external members do have limited permissions with a key limitation. They cannot add or remove space members. Click Create and your space is created. Notice in this space there is an external banner at the top next to the heading. As I join the space, I can see options to add more people, begin adding files or assigning tasks. These buttons are locked to the beginning of the conversation, so will soon be moved up as the interaction in the space becomes more plentiful. In this view, I am also offered a prompt for setting my notifications. This will appear for the creator and for new members when they first enter the space. Notifications can be set for all interactions in the space, only interactions on threads I am following or limited to interactions in which I am at mentioned. After this initial view, notification options and other settings can be accessed from the arrow next to the space title. Some top settings here include adding and removing members, pinning spaces to the top of the space list for quick access, updating notifications, turning off chat history, and of course, leaving the space. Now, let's turn our attention to interacting with messages in our new space. When working in the integrated Gmail view, a new message will pop up in a notification bubble. I can quickly see the message, use the reply button to open a pop-up, respond in text or emoji, and minimize the window back down into a bubble while I wait to see what responses come back from other group members. The Gmail integration is great for quickly viewing and responding to a chat. Alternatively, I could have clicked the bubble or the text to open the chat in a full window. When arriving in the space interface, there are a few elements to look out for. Look for an external label. If there is one, this is an indication that there may be external stakeholders in this channel, so be careful with internal confidential information. Two, look at the number of members in the space. If you see large numbers of members in a channel, this is more likely a general or comms channel. If there are many members in a space, be mindful of what you are communicating and consider is the comment or information appropriate for general communication. Three, look for the unread marker. This indicates that there are more recent messages that you have not seen yet. Jane is replying to a message. She can reply in the main conversation thread by using the text box at the bottom of the conversation. Rich formatting allows for expressive communication and she can add emoji or communicate wordlessly with a GIF. Clicking the right hand arrow will send the message. Alternatively, Jane can choose to reply directly to the message in a threaded side conversation. This allows for side conversations to happen without disrupting the central communication flow. Direct replies also allow team members to communicate with emoji or GIF. When making a direct reply and creating a side conversation, the user is defaulted to following this thread. This allows the user to be notified when more responses are generated on this thread. If Jane has no further interest in this thread, she can simply unfollow, but if she continues to follow the conversations, she can see new replies indicated by the new replies icon and will potentially receive notifications if she selected that notification option. In addition to the chat thread, Spaces has a file inventory providing a central repository for all files added to the space. Files can be added in the conversation or directly here. Also, 
Members can view all tasks associated with the space. Adding a task to the space will allow the member to give it a title and a description, set a deadline and assign to a member within the space. Now you have mastered the top functions to create spaces for communication, know how to make these internal or open channels, interact quickly and securely, access shared documents and add tasks assigned to space members. As always, let us know how you are using chat spaces and keep an eye out for more videos as we explore further in depth the functionality in Google Chat and Spaces.